welcome back so in today in in short we'll be looking at libman sac endocarditis so here this libman sac endocarditis is also known as the atypical vero verucus and this name it comes from two scientist known as Lidman and Sack respectively and looking at the etiopathogenesis they are present in case of systemic lupus erythematosus in about 50% of them and also other diseases can include endocarditis like systemic sclerosis sclerosis as well as ttp that is thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura and also includes other collagen diseases Now moving ahead, we'll be, we'll be looking at uh, the pathology, it's microscopic. So here, this is mainly present. These kind of vegetations are present in the mitral and tricuspid valve, and they are small about 4 mm less than 4 mm in diameter and uh, granular as well as multiple and they occur in both surfaces of the affected valves it's also present in both sides of the valve and the healed vegetations of Libman sac do not produce valvular deformity. So you can say the healed portion does not cause deformity in valves. And the other point is the fibrous and serofibrous pericarditis and the serofibrous pericarditis fibrous pericarditis is associated along with the pericardial effusion is associated with this condition And other points to note are the fibrinoid material is present along with the fibrin and platelet thrombi thrombi and it also includes other features such as fibrinoid necrosis as well as the proliferating capillaries and infiltration of infiltration by histiocytes as well as plasma cells, lymphocytes, neutrophils and so on and uh, there is also hemotoxylin bodies of gross They are nothing but they are counterparts of LE cells. So they are similar to that of the LE cells of the blood. And what is to be known is that the inflammatory changes can be found in the so the change can be found in the interstitial interstitial connective tissue of myocardium 
and the it can never be found it's not found in case of the endocardium or myocardium thank you